Weld School channel. Today we're taking a look at the Titanium Stick 225. This little machine is sold at Harbor Freight, and I'm not going to lie, uh, when I saw this machine, I'm like, yeah, I'm sure it doesn't uh, put out a good arc, and I'm sure it won't run a 6010 or a 6011, but we're going to go ahead and put that to the test today. Uh, take a look at the machine. You have a switch for 220 or 240 volt hookup, and then you have your uh, thermometer for your duty cycle. You got a couple of rings in here, whether you're on the you know 240 or the 120 volt hookup, and they do give you a little ring here for 6010s, and that anything in the green is for those 6010s. I like the machine. It is uh, compact. This thing's probably without looking at the, you know, the, the manufacturer's uh, booklet, uh, I would say that this thing is less than 20 pounds, no problem. Uh, so nice and light. You have a DINS 1025 connector uh, for both the ground and the stinger. In the back of the machine, you have your on-off switch, and it's got a pretty quiet cooling fan once it kicks on. And then that's going to run continuous. Over here on the other side, it does give you a little chart. This is a single phase only uh, hookup, and they're going to give you your duty cycle chart here. For our 120 volt hookup, we are at 40% duty cycle at 70 amps, and 100% duty cycle at 45 amps. If you do have a 240 hookup, we have a 20% duty cycle at 225 amps, uh, quite impressive, and then 100% duty cycle at 100 amps. So uh, a lot of your 332 and eighth inch rods, uh, you'll have no problem running this thing nonstop without that duty cycle ever tripping. Uh, they also give you a little chart here at the top. Uh, again, they got some duty cycle information up at the top here. They have a settings chart for 60, 10, 11, 13, 14, 18, and 24. So I do like that. So if you uh, are unsure of what to set the machine to, they, they do give you a little uh, diagram at the top to use. Uh, so when I take a look at these DINs connectors, I notice that there's the, the, the lead itself is solid. When I try to roll it, I don't feel any movement with the copper inside of there. Uh, sometimes some of your cheaper machines uh, the, the copper wire itself is, uh, you know, loose in there and, you know, not great quality. Uh, the stinger itself is, feels a little chintzy. I mean, the spring is solid, uh, but this part, it's almost too light. I mean, it's almost like you're not even grabbing anything at all. Uh, but, you know, it's a DINS 1025 connector. If, if you don't like this, particular stinger you could easily well you could either pop this off and put the one on that you want that would match the rating of the cable or you can just replace the whole thing because this is not a, a hard part to get by any means uh, the clamp itself you know it's pretty thin metal but for what it's being used for i think it's fine we're going to put this to the test today and i'm going to run a handful of different rods i have some 332 some eighth inch 532 and I'm even going to run a quarter inch rod on this thing and see if it can actually hold up. The rods that I'm going to run today are going to be 6013s, 18s, 6010s and 11s. I like to use the cellulosic rods uh, being that a lot of smaller machines cannot handle the uh, arc with a cellulosic rod. I have an 8010 here. Uh, the 8P plus pipe liner. And then I have this monster quarter inch rod here that we are going to test out. So hang out, let's see what this machine can do.
right, we have a quarter inch unidentified rod, assuming it's probably some type of a drag rod, maybe a F1 or F2 group rod. I highly doubt this is a 7018, uh, but regardless, it's a soft arc rod. We're past the green on the front of the machine. We are totally maxed out at 225 amps, and we're gonna see what a quarter inch rod does on a 300 or less than $300 machine. And there you have it, quarter inch rod. The issue was, is that this slag was rolling in front of the arc, putting it out a couple times. Uh, so I did change my angle after about the first inch to make it an extreme drag. And I don't even know what the rod is to know exactly what the amperage is supposed to be. Uh, but that right there is a hot dog rod, if I've ever seen one. All right, so we just got done welding with the titanium stick 225. Again, I, I have to repeat that this is a $299 machine and I ran a bunch of rods, different sizes, uh, cellulosic, um, rutile, uh, just, you know, low hydrogen, ran a whole bunch of different rods and just completely impressed. I will say right off the bat that the 120, uh, has a little bit of a low arc. It almost seems like a like a hot start setting um, But once you get it going then it runs fine It's really gonna max out. It says it maxes out at 70 amps and I, I ran a 332 7018 which is usually 85s up into the 90s and Was still able to produce a halfway decent bead with that just a little bit low some 60 Tens. This is a 332, which was no problem for it. There was plenty of amperage for that 6010. No arc uh, instability whatsoever. And this is actually a eighth inch 6010. Um, it, it went out on me early because I was so close, uh, but then I just long arced and there was enough heat there, even maxed out at 70 on the 120. The 230s, hands down, if you have the hookup, hands down the best way to go. Uh, I ran some 8P plus, uh, both 532 and 316ths. Uh, so ran some, some big boys, some 7018 eighth inch rods, some more 6010s, and then by far the most impressive thing was running a quarter inch mystery rod. Uh, so I had a really lean the rod down to push that flux away and there you go i mean this is just a gigantic bead and no problem it did not kick off whatsoever uh, so for this little machine it, it does pump out a pretty impressive arc